Hey friend, I'm Jess M. Cutler, and I'm so glad you've decided to join me today on another episode in the Encourage series of the Inspires podcast. It was so fun having my sister Bethany Holden on the last episode to talk about what it's been like to rebuild her entire identity after losing all of her memories at 17 years old. It's been a really difficult time, a lot of growth for our family, but I am so happy that we've been able to form a stronger and unbreakable bond since that time. So that was a lot of fun. Before that, in episode 13, I was happy to report that almost after a full year of putting boundaries in place in my events business, things have gotten better. They weren't the best. I've still got some growing pains that I've got to work through, but considering where I was physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually when COVID knocked out the business, things are better. So if you missed it, in a nutshell, I accepted the least amount of groups and events that I've ever accepted in the seven years of being in business by the end of last year and did over 25% more revenue than I've ever done in the seven years of being in business. And I didn't lose my mind. I mean, there was that there was that moment, it was like late June, early July, that I almost lost the cool there. <laughs> but I held it together, barely. And that was about the time that I decided that I would need to decline any further events for the year based on the workload that I'd already committed myself and the team to. So once that boundary was in place, as much as it sucked, <laughs> it just sucked to say no to all the groups from that point forward, I was able to get my heart back in check and deliver excellence to the groups that I had committed to. And that felt great. So something the boundary book says is it says find the misery make a roll and my misery was that I had more demand than supply and I feel like that's been the anthem post-COVID years for pretty much every business many groups wanted me to do their events to buy my time and unfortunately I didn't have any more time in my inventory to sell I didn't have time to train in a new event designer. My event service manager was already working full weeks to operate the events in-house. And my game plan that I thought I had in place to handle all the events I knew I needed to say no to, it just was not working out. So <laughs> the rule simply became I had to say no to any further commitments. But once I put that in place, that misery shifted to hard. Like, more, more so like the hard task of saying no. And as much as that sucks, because the guilt motivator in me is very, very strong, understanding that if I let guilt rule my life, then I was letting the fear of hurting someone's feelings be my master. And I did not want to be a slave to that fear. Because where there is fear, love cannot exist. And if I wasn't giving the service out of love, if the motivation was anything less than yes, then I knew that I was inviting the lies and the bitterness and the anxiety and the stress and the strive back into my life. So I embraced the hard instead of the misery. And I'm loving myself and my business for it. And it's been a while and in truth, maybe possibly ever <laughs> that I could say that I love my business. So now that I have stalled, long enough on literally recapping <laughs> the last Encourage episode. Let's really get into why I have you here today and what I want to share. So on episode five, I introduced some of the other endeavors that I was planning to start in 2022 um, into 2021. And so here they are. Like as a recap, I have Informs, which is what I call my people project. And with this, I want to multiply my heart of hospitality into the hearts of other aspiring event planners. So Informs is going to offer online educational courses, coaching, consulting, and be a mentoring resource to event planners from the entry level to entrepreneurs from beginner to the best. That's Informs. Next is Inspires, which I've been calling my Providence platform. Max Licato, he defines Providence as the $2 term theologians use to describe God's continuous control over history. And this is obviously where the podcast lives, but I just wanted to create an intentional space in my life that I sincerely offered my gifts, the ones that I keep putting on the shelf <laughs> because of invents, just to be used by God in whatever way he sees fit. I mean, I have some visions, I have some goals within this space, but ultimately the main goal is that 
I just, I don't know. He uses me and my gifts to hold up my little corner of the kingdom. (laughs) But in this space, I am able to offer my Maxwell certified skills of speaking, coaching, and training to the individuals who maybe have no interest in event planning whatsoever. And then just because that wasn't enough, there's crosswinds, which I so lovingly call it my passion project (laughs) because I just love to sing and God gave me a voice to do it. So this is the band that me and my friend, who just happens to be one of the most incredible concert violinists and country fiddler, began. And we perform country and rock, today's hits, corporate events, and, you know, at private parties and stuff like that. But certainly has space and opportunity to evolve. I just wanted to start somewhere to share my gift with all. So informs, inspires, and crosswinds. Oh, and just... Saying all of that, (laughs) I immediately go into overwhelm. I mean, I feel the same anxiety and God, you have got to be kidding me. Disbelief I felt when I first saw this vision, like coming into the horizon at the end of 2021. It was right after I read Jordan Rainer's Call to Create. I blame him. And I didn't see it then, but like I see it now. And so for me, it reminds me of like whenever you're performing and right before a show starts, (laughs) <laughs> you're like, hmm, I wonder how many people are here. And it's like, you just kind of like, mm, kind of like peek through that side curtain. And instead of the hundred people that you thought might be there, there's like 10,000. I remember this feeling vividly when I was getting ready to walk on stage in a two-piece for the Miss North Carolina Scholarship pageant. And if you're a seasoned performer, which I do consider myself that, this is actually a really exhilarating feeling for me. From It gives me like a nervous excitement in the pit of my stomach. It's not like, bad. It's good. It's like the reason why I do it. It's like, this is my adrenaline rush. But for others, like my husband, who have never been on stage in their life, that moment can be very terrifying. It can be paralyzing. I mean, really, one of the <laughs> one of the first and only times that he ever went on stage was for a community theater show, which is where we met. We call this our divine appointment. He He basically hyperventilated. And there was luckily someone there to kind of like help him get his breath back. But he hyperventilated doing that little side peek before the curtains opened. And in all fairness, he was getting ready to walk out and strip down to his unmentionables in the production of Full Monty. So eh, maybe hyperventilating was was a fair, was fair trade. But at the end of 2021, I was technically stepping onto a stage, a platform that I had never been on in my life. And it was the platform of purpose. I kept pleading and praying that God would show me my purpose, my why. Why did he put me on this earth? And he was like, all right, well, if you want to take a little peek. And he kind of slid, <laughs> kind of slid back that side curtain. And instead of there being just like a few clients and friends and family that I was planning events for, it was like, here's this global audience. <laughs> um, and where I think I went wrong, okay, so where I think I went wrong in all of this, like I so often do, is I said the words to some of my best mistakes, which was, it can't be that hard. Y'all, I have lived with myself long enough to know that if you ever hear me say the words, like, we're going to try this. I've never done it before, but it can be that hard. Run as fast as you can. Those are like famous last words for some of my most time-taxing, terrible, hate myself in the morning, but also life-changing, incredible, creative, and wow-worthy moments. So you can see why I keep doing them. In 2 Corinthians, it's 12, 9 through 10, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I will delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And boy, I've been weak. I have failed pretty miserably in getting (laughs) any of these other things off the ground. But just because I have failed in my weakness, God has been strong. He has not failed at all. In fact, now that I look back on this, really this last year, I think he's been trying to do all these different things in my life. And he knew I would be trying to like stick my fingers in the batter and like telling him how to make his cake and (laughs) why he's trying to cook it. So he had me like stirring eggs on the other side of the kitchen. I mean, mom, mom, the kids, like you understand. So it's like he was trying to do all this work. I was trying to help him. And so he was like, you know what? I just need you to hear. I need you to work on invent. So I was technically working with my business coach, Aaron Harrigan. I go, oh my gosh, Aaron, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I say your last name wrong every time. Aaron Harrigan. And actually, after she spoke on my podcast is when I began working with her. So she has been such a game changer in my mindset and in my business. But 
I kept telling her all these things that I needed to get done in these other businesses, but also all the commitments that I needed to keep with Invents. And everything kept pulling us back to Invents. See, this was me stirring eggs. God was like, here, stir your eggs. And I could tell at one point I was getting really irritated. I was getting irritated all the time that I was spending in Invents because just as I had feared, it was consuming all my time. And to keep from working from sunup to sundown, <laughs> I was having to constantly put all my other endeavors on the back burner. And that was really frustrating for me. <sighs> all I wanted to do was anything else. But Erin was awesome. And she kept pulling me back, calming me down and saying, but Jess, until you get invents running without you, this is your training ground. This is what's going to financially fuel all these other opportunities. And every day you show up to work in events, you are writing and creating content for Informs. Every day you coach a client to a great event or you train a team member to be a leader or you deliver excellence through another incredible program. You are living inspires. You're right on track. I'm not your coach to pursue success your way. I'm here to help you pursue success God's way. So how about, let's not tell him how his will is going to play out in your life. And okay, full disclosure, that is not at all what she said to me. (laughs) But through all of her encouraging words and her inspiring questions, this is what I heard. And y'all, after four years of marriage counseling, it's I know this. It's not about what you say. It's about what they heard. So this is what I heard. And she was right. (sighs) So last year was all about invents and intentionally growing and building more so in my heart informs and inspires. And I gave myself, or more so Aaron did, (laughs) gave myself permission to focus on events last year. And if you didn't listen to episode 13, you can go back, you can hear all about that, all about my boundaries, all about the ways that I focused in events. But another year has begun. And obviously some things have changed. For the more better, because I'm sitting back down with you on this podcast and I'm telling you my story. And over the past year and a half-ish, God has moved some incredible ladies into and out of the business. Out of the business ladies are definitely some hard lessons learned for another time, but the ones he brought in have allowed me to shift gears this year into, well, I say a little less out of events and into the way you're seeing me now. Uh, See, (laughs) last year, no matter how hard I tried, nothing seemed to fall into place. I just couldn't find time to focus and create in forms. I couldn't get the help I needed to build Inspire. So they just didn't happen. But this year, it's all happening all at the same time. And it's so exciting and overwhelming all at once. And I'm right here in the beginning of all the things. So now you've heard me say it. I have been painstakingly waiting to be able to get started on all the things. And now that they are all coming together, guess what? <sighs> now I'm worried that I'm I'm taking on too much. <laughs> it's just like my disc profile. I am a beautiful contradiction. I mean, God really has his hands full with this one. And if you're listening, I am pointing to myself. <sighs> so here I am. I've got a senior events manager to handle the business. So she's the one that I've been training and I've been teaching for the last year. And now she is rocking it with minimal guidance for me. I had an executive assistant that now she's actually moved into a marketing and media manager position. And she's handling all the demands of getting the businesses out into the world. And it's been such a wonderful transition. So I've even brought in like a part-time bookkeeper who's been assisting with the financials. I'm onboarding an operations and office assistant to do more of that day-to-day stuff, kind of get that off my plate. And obviously, everything that everyone's doing are very important, but it's not the most important things and not that I, well, not the important things that I should be working on specifically myself and spending my time. So I just signed a contract with a Kajabi expert to help me build these courses and a marketing plan for Informs. And before I signed a contract with my podcast editor, I stopped a moment to consult with my coach because I just needed to make sure that she thought that I could do all the things before I committed. (laughs) Now, just so you don't think that I have like farmed out all of my work, what I've kept on my plate is obviously being a leader and a mentor to my events team, which takes time and patience and love. 
but I'm also continuing to design the events that fall over like our 30,000, 50,000 price point and make business development decisions to help the business continue to grow. I'm still working to be a great wife and partner to my marriage of almost 10 years, take care of our sweet little fur babies, be the world's most awesome aunt. Well, that's a full-time job I take a lot of pride in. And now write all the content for Informs, which is a lot. And, you know, I don't do anything easy, so <laughs> it's not like I'm doing that the easy route. And then, of course, you know, for me, I just want to be intentional about sharing my heart and bringing my focus to the conversations with the other guests on the show and podcast. So that is where I ultimately felt like my skills and gifts were best used in the growth of the businesses. So, but after Erin assured me that she believed that I could do the things that, I don't know, I still wasn't 100 percent convinced that I could, you know, handle everything. So I brought all my worries into my devotion time the next morning after our coaching session. And at the time, I was reading and working through a wonderful devotion, Because He Said So, by Missy Washam. And this is a 40-day devotional where she works through 40 affirmations that help you discover who the I am says I am. You know, in the South, when your mama, like, when you tells you to do something, you go, oh, but why? She says, because I said so. Well... <laughs> This is kind of the premise of that book because it's the affirmations of who you are because God said so in the word, in the Bible. So the confidence that I was studying on this particular day was confidence. Now, for anyone that knows me, knows, confidence has never really been anything that I've struggled with. Humility, yes. Confidence, no. And I love how John Maxwell describes confidence. He says, confidence is not knowing all the answers. It's knowing that you can handle whatever is thrown at you. And even with that definition, I would still say that I am pretty confident. So at the end of the chapter, when it asks, have you ever failed at something and been hesitant to try again? Hmm. Well, there was this one time that I started an event planning business and no matter what I tried, I kept getting knocked back to the starting line. Oh, or that time I started a podcast and couldn't keep it going because of everything else I had going on in my life. Hmm. Ooh, or I launched a new business that I couldn't find time to actually get launched. There was that. Or the time that I was so wrapped up in the business that I almost lost my marriage. Ooh, or how about that time? <laughs> how about that time that I became addicted to the stress and the adrenaline of trying to do everything all by myself? That I totally tanked my hormones and my health completely. Hmm. Yeah, I could I could think of a few times that I had failed and I felt hesitant to start again. Next question was, in what areas of your life do you lack confidence? And as confident as I think I am, my answer, without hesitating, it was in my ability to do all the things, to lead the team, podcast, write the course, great wife, pup, pup mom, stay healthy, protect my peace. Last question. This one that got me. In Philippians 4.13, it says, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. What can you accomplish for the Lord if you move forward in confidence in all areas, knowing that you can do all things through Christ? Uh, And there it was. The Bible verse that I had memorized for Bible drills when I was in elementary school that I had engraved on a bracelet that I wore every time I stepped on stage to sing that was printed on t-shirts that I wear around the house. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then like pulling back the curtains of that stage once again, the answer was so clear to me. Jessica, you can't do all the things, not when you're trying to do them all by yourself. You can do all the things through Christ who gives you strength. (laughs) Talk about a confidence. That was the affirmation that I needed. So, Signed my contract with my new podcast editor, a person that I certainly believe that God has placed in my life in this season of starting, and here I am, right in the beginning. So that's a lot to say that I really haven't done a lot of things in my other businesses this year, (laughs) but God has, and I am learning every single day that the more I strive in His grace instead of for His grace— He opens doors that I never even knew were in the hallway of opportunity. So, 
You're just going to have to keep tuning in (laughs) on how God intends to use all these other platforms. I know that's what I'm doing. And I'm simply praying that I receive patience and perseverance that my I want to get it all done and do it perfect personality is replaced with a in your will and in your time stride. That even though I know I will continue to strive to do all the things, if I do them while abiding in grace, that even if I can't get them checked off my to-do list, if they are on his to-do list, he will get them to done. And I can only hope that I'm willing to say yes and be ready to take the bold step forward when I realize that God has positioned me perfectly in this journey and this growth for such a time as this. So thanks for listening today and being a part of the in crowd. Be sure to keep listening as this new season gets rolling with more interviews, more insights, more encouragement, and most of all, more inspiration. We'll see you next time.